Hi, um, it's a pleasure to be here and thanks for coming. And thanks Benny, we're fortunate to have Benny around uh, in good times and also in bad times. So terrific that you came. Uh, some came from Korea, some came from Palo Alto, which is as difficult, almost. <laughs> and yeah, the traffic jams on one-on-one, -on -one, et cetera. Uh, but, but seriously, thank you, and we invite everyone to continue to collaborate with us on all of the open source channels, the, the mailing list, Slack, and uh, poke us as much as possible, and also bring the, wo the word to the uh, rest of the uh, NoSQL users. So without further ado, let's jump into uh, this session, which covers uh, relatively fast what we've done over the, the past year, and uh, hand over to uh, customer use cases and to Avi. So we started with a failure. Uh, we started with uh, OSV, an operating system that we developed, and that didn't go that well. Like the Webster Dictionary defined it as lack of success. We definitely had lack of success, maybe, especially in the case for users. And it's, it's done two things. Uh, the first one, uh, it's made us humble. We thought that after KVM, the, the world will just embrace whatever we do and jump on it immediately, and it didn't happen. And so even now, when we do Scylla, and we think that Scylla is fantastic, and two years ago, I was thinking like, what the heck, why not everyone just go ahead and try it out? It, over the course of development, you see that there's more complexity and stability and scale and people need to see that it's real and it takes time to develop a damn good database. And although we're still three, three years in the process of just the da pure database development, we see that it's difficult, uh, we have success, but it's, we're just in the beginning. So it made us more humble and it's also made us try harder, make us, made us hungrier for success. We don't get that uh, in, granted and we we're, we're definitely will try harder. And Thomas Edison used sort of uh, to get away that he didn't fail uh, and found tons of way it doesn't work. The, the nice thing is that uh, with the operating system, we wanted to eliminate layers, uh, uh, provide better performance and better sim simplicity for various workloads, Cassandra included, and today we actually do that. Uh, once we rewrote Cassandra with a bigger differentiator. So we're trying persistently to get better and better and Cassandra is just one step on the way to uh, world domination or uh, be the default um, a NoSQL framework and sometimes even beyond NoSQL. So let's observe the number and stop using soft words um, so this is a graph that compares the number of uh, uh, weekly commits from the combined Scylla and Seastar project and Cassandra. And you can see that uh, our numbers, we commit much more code than what Cassandra project is doing. And we have to, we need to try harder. Uh, this is even more surprising graph because it shows, compares the amount of uh, monthly unique contributors between Cassandra and Seastar and uh, Scylla. And just recently we managed to pass the Cassandra project. So the numbers are playing for us. And if you do not believe me, check GitHub because we derived it from GitHub. And uh, also last month there was a Cassandra development uh, conference and they showed similar graph for Cassandra alone. And we see that with the downloads, we get downloads from the, all over the world, and we have thousands of downloads a week, sometimes even more on a, on a release um, weeks. So some more numbers. Uh, it's the second annual conference, 2X on the conference, uh, more than 200 attendees, uh, almost 2X in the number of uh, employees worldwide, 2X in the number of offices. Uh, we have people in, in coming from 14 countries, more than 2x on the funding, plenty of uh, production installations, uh, definitely not enough, but we're growing. Uh, over the past year, we released five open source uh, releases, and I encourage, encourage everyone to make sure that you move to a supported open source version. Don't stick to an older one, 
always get it updated. We work really hard to make those updates uh, as uh, stable as possible. So make sure that you're on a supported open source version or of course our enterprise version, which we also released this year. Uh, if you'll go to the um, uh, demo areas, you'll see more than a million IOPS. We can do a million and a half with a single machine. There are uh, uh, two nice scenario presenters there. Uh, a single cluster of ours can span one petabyte of data just with 30 nodes. Uh, it means 30 uh, gigabytes per node, pretty massive. Uh, also another possibility, interesting possibility is to uh, use the, the best hardware in the market for uh, SSD drives, and I'm speaking about Intel Optane and Samsung ZSSD, and I bet there are others too. And if you use such uh, hardware, you can get to half a millisecond latency on the server side, which is usually better than any other in-memory workloads. So if you use this hardware, you get better performance than in-memory. You get persistency, because those drive are persistent. And it's half the cost, because they, they are cheaper than RAM. So Scylla open up more cases uh, to run, not just the, the pure Cassandra one. Um, over the past uh, three years, we tried to put into buckets the development uh, features that we developed. Uh, one out of three buckets. Uh, stability, uh, all the performance in the world won't help you if you write to DevNull or something similar. Uh, performance, and uh, over the past two years after the beta, we, we weren't focusing on uh, raw performance, but performance uh, out of the box and performance uh, un under the face of failures. So th th this is what counts in order to get good production workloads. And compatibility with Cassandra. And we, we've done a lot of features over just the past year. A lot of development was, doing, was going on with um, materialized views and secondary indexes, that, which is just about to be released under experimental mode. And we're also careful with the experimental mode. We're not just pushing features at you. Uh, important features even like SQL tracing, which isn't uh, a, a glorious feature, but it's important to get to, to know what's running under the hood. Virus repair improvements, repair is now working. There was a time that it didn't work. Uh, and plenty of other uh, features, some of them unique, like heat-based heat load balancing. We have a presentation about that and a CPU scheduler, and some more. Uh, the enterprise release that we released uh, is supported a, with a 24 by 7 guarantee, long life cycle, security features such as encryption at rest, an audit, a new compaction strategy that uh, Nadav and Rafael will cover tomorrow, and uh, a, the beginning of a management console that initially uh, it does repair only, and over time it will grow the functionality that it has. I'm also very pleased to announce that we have a new partnership with IBM, uh, IBM Power Systems. It turns out that uh, the power machine is fabulous. It has eight threads per core. Yeah, it's, it's indeed fabulous. And it's not only power. I'll soon mention some other architectures. Uh, it has eight uh, thread per core, unlike the two thread per core that uh, x86 has. And if you have uh, 20 core machines, it can run 160 CPUs. And Scylla is one of the rare uh, 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 frameworks out there that can utilize all of these CPUs. And in this graph, you can see that all of those CPUs, 160 of them, are at 100% CPU utilization. So power provides you 68% better performance than a matching Intel uh, deployment. Um, and it's not just power. Uh, Scylla is being ported to uh, Z-Series, the mainframe. Uh, also a nice surprise. Uh, with KVM, KVM got ported to all of the architectures out there, and now we are, have already four. ARM port is coming up, and it's already working. Uh, we, we'll release some news uh, in a month's time for now. And I mentioned before, the fastest drive and the fastest NICs are perfect for your workload. And it's all due to Sista. We encourage individuals and companies to uh, create projects around Sista, which is just amazing framework. Uh, there is a presentation here from Alex, uh, who works at Akamai, about his fantastic uh, RPC. And also, there is the Pedis project developed by Baidu 
also ex an exciting project. Um, database, back to databases. So we define Scylla now as autonomous database. Uh, frankly, it's a rebranding of workload conditioning. It means that uh, we package together various algorithms that make sure to provide your workload a, in its SLA, so you, your request will be prioritized over the maintenance jobs, and there's a lot of them um, uh, in Scylla. Uh, you get automatic tuning, you get automatic back pressure, scale up, down, in and out, uh, while having, um, while uh, making sure everything is automatic and you do not need to care for everything. And even uh, complex data models can be supported without much of an effort because the database tries to optimize itself constantly at runtime. So initially it was all about performance and uh, over the past uh, couple of years, it it's began to be about simplicity as well. Um, this is why we also announced the acquisition of IP from a company called CSAR.io, uh, a network Redux subsidiary. It's very important to provide just services. Many people do not want to run the database, uh, and that's why we're, uh, we bought this IP, and we're heading this way in order to shorten the time to market. Uh, we're not ready yet with, to provide the full service. With uh, offer DBAS, there are companies today that offer DBAS with Scylla, uh, IBM included, and InstaCluster too, and some more are looking into this space. Uh, we'll be offering such a solution, and in the meantime, you can enjoy from our uh, test drive application that allows you to form a cluster, a loaders, a automatic benchmark, and afterwards you can log in into those virtual machines with SSH to experience it yourself, all with a single click if you go to our website. And it's just for an hour, because uh, it's free. Um, so the audience here is really uh, early adopters and experts but we want to bring the Scylla promise to everyone, not just the experts, also the average users need to be successful, and experts need to do what they do the best, and not necessarily tune the database or tune the JVM over and over, uh, so this is what we care about. And, and if I'm wrapping up, over the past three years, we were focusing about launching beta, which is, uh, was actually more of an alpha, and afterward GA, which was the beta. And over the past year, we've been, uh, we can constantly say that uh, Scylla is a GA ready, or post GA ready, and it run multi runs multiple cr critical, mission critical applications. So th this has happened over the course of the past three years but we're not here to celebrate the past three years. It's more of a outgoing towards the future. And in the future, there are plenty of things for us to do, from improvements in database as a service, from a map reduce and a help workloads like Spark and Presto and similar other workloads, new file formats and plenty of other things. So just think about what we accomplished together in the past three years and what will happen in the next years. One of the things that we were mostly excited about, and it's a super difficult endeavor, is not only to provide DBAS like everyone else, uh, and they use uh, node granularity behind the scene, and even DynamoDB uses nodes behind the scenes. The idea is to have a type of a serverless database, a similar thing to what S3 offers you, so without the notion of nodes. And we have the building blocks here because uh, all of the building blocks that supports SLA and our IO scheduler and CPU scheduler will come into play and will allow us to uh, have a multi-tenant, true multi-tenant uh, database deployment, which will be way more efficient because all of the idle resources will be shared by one gigantic cluster. And if you need to scale out, scale out will be instantaneous because you won't need to wait for data to stream to other nodes, data will already be sharded across the one gigantic cluster. It, take, it will take a long while to get there, but that's um, where we're heading. The present is already pretty promising, and you can consolidate tons of workload today from in-memory key value blobs and build infrastructure or real-time bidding or whatever 
with Scylla and you, we encourage you to come up with more demands. And uh, enough about uh, me telling you that it'll be the best to hear it from the community members, from users and partners. Uh, and the nice thing here, all of them except for, for IBM and Samsung are new logos and uh, IBM and Samsung are doubling down on Scylla. So that's great. And with that, uh, I'll thank you again, and I'd like to invite uh, Nadine Kolev from MParticle to uh, provide details about their Scylla um, journey. So thank you very much, and enjoy the show.